Hey guys, hope you're having the best day of your life. I'm here with my man, Mike. Mike owns a kick butt roofing company in Florida. Now listen, Mike, uh, he's in my inner circle brotherhood. I literally talked to him. I met his wife and they were at an event this weekend. As I hear his story and I see the organization that they're growing, I'm like, dude, this guy's on fire. He's hungry. You know, just in the last two months since we met, he's lost 30 pounds. He's on this crazy, fast self-development journey. You know, I, I believe in total recreation. And as I've learned, Mike, there's so many times in his life that he's recreated and changed. And now you're bigging it, building a, a giant army. You're building a giant sales organization uh, from commercial roofing to residential roofing. You're looking for the best sales reps. I mean, when you say the best sales reps, I mean, not people that have sold roofs before. If they sold roofs, that's a bonus, but they don't have to. People that have the core values that you have and that really want to elevate and become leaders because you're trying to build as many leaders as you can in your company. Um, but let's talk about real quick before we get to what you're doing now and this kick butt roofing company you have and, and everything that's going awesome in your life. Um, let's talk about where you're raised because, you know, I think you're kind of a lot like me and like a lot of people. You come from a broken family and sure. um, I think you said your dad was an alcoholic. My mom was an alcoholic. Yeah. You know, let's talk about how people that come from nothing can end up with the most sure. and how when you have adversity in your life, you actually use it as fuel to build a great, big, beautiful life like you have. Okay, so, so tell us about that, Mike. Uh, introduce yourself. Absolutely. Well, my name is Mike Martinez. Uh, I own a company called Z's Roofing and Construction mm -hmm. uh, in Orlando, Florida, primarily. We are, Beautiful Orlando, yeah, Florida. Yeah, we, we love Orlando, Florida. And uh, I'll tell you what, year-round, great weather, right? It's the truth, man. So that is awesome. But uh, I'm, I'm a licensed builder and a licensed roofer in okay. the state of Florida. So uh, we're dual licensed, which is which is great. Mm -hmm. But uh, my background, Andy, is uh, comes from a Hispanic background, right? And you're military, right? I am military. Okay, yes, okay sir. keep going. But I want to get yes, in that too. So, thank you for serving, man. Uh, thank you, thank you. And it was actually it was my honor to serve. To be honest with yeah. you, uh, you know, our whole family is basically military. That's awesome. And, uh, I saw you, you pin know, one of your nephews. Absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He became a major. And uh, not only that, his wife became a major the following week. That's amazing. And uh, so they're both, uh, we call them the power couple of the family now because they're yeah. both majors in the, yeah. in the army. So yeah. which, that's, it's a great deal. That's super cool. Yeah, it is. All right. Awesome, keep going. Man. I didn't want to stop. But nah, no, no problem. So you're talking about Hispanic. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Hispanic, we, we moved down, my parents moved down to uh, Chicago, mm -hmm. right? From Puerto Rico. And my dad was a vice president of this uh, freight forwarding company. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he said, "Okay, in Puerto Rico, I'm going to go ahead and uh, in I'm, I'm making money for the man. I want to be the man. Mm -hmm. So we moved to Chicago, which I don't know if you know, but Chicago was a big hub at that time for freight forwarding, mm -hmm. right? So at that time, we mo they moved. It was 1976, I believe, is when they moved. Okay, and uh, my two brothers were already born, and my two sisters were already born. I was, I was a, uh, I was." close to being born around that time. Was you born right? in Puerto Rico or in the States? I was born in Chicago. Oh, in Chicago. I was born in Chicago. So you got yeah. dual citizenship. I, I do. Uh -huh. I do. Well, Puerto Rico, it's, it's, it's part, oh, it's of, part the of the States. Oh, it's part of the States. Yeah, that's right. States, okay, right? yeah, so yeah. The only thing right. you need to do is travel over there is have a license, right? Yeah, so, okay. But, uh, so he came, uh, the, the family came over to Chicago, mm -hmm. and what, what took place is that my dad wanted to open up a freight forwarding company. He said, okay, I was working for the man, want to make some money, let's, let's start our own business, and we were going to do it. Mm -hmm. The first three years was phenomenal, Andy. I mean, phenomenal. The business was blowing up. I mean, it was scaling at a fast pace. Mm -hmm. Then, for some odd reason, alcohol got mm. into his life. Mm. He started drinking occasionally, then occasionally went to every day, and then every day started becoming violent. And from there, it just uh, it, it got out of control. It's so and, crazy, uh, man. Yeah, and, and that's all she wrote, man. And uh, my mom had enough of it because... Uh, you know, he was he was just being abusive to my mom, mm -hmm. and uh, she said that she did not want to see her five kids uh, see that, and then also grow up. With yeah, she that, did the right, right thing. So she did the right thing, and mm -hmm. God bless my mom. You know, she was she was uh, raising us. Uh, you know, since nineteen early seventies, early eighties, just raising us, and uh, just we're living on food stamps. Tr don't know how we're going to keep the light on. Right, but don't she know. pulled out to make sure that you guys um, didn't Absol have to be around that. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people don't have the courage to do that, man. So you got a really yeah. good mother. And then also, isn't it crazy, man? I want everybody to think about this just for a second because you said that. I see people every day, like they're not getting taken out because a market is bad. They're getting taken out because self-sabotage. 
Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Sure. Sure. Like, like, like they are sabotaging themselves. Absolutely. It's exactly what your dad did. Yeah. Your dad could have had it all. He had the American dream. He sure did. Um, anyway, it's just crazy, man. I just want to tell everybody, like, just make sure, make sure understanding that this is common. I, I see this all the time. So uh, make sure you really pay attention to how, to how important decision making is. Yeah. You know, it, and to stay away from negative things, negative people. Um, doesn't seem like it's going to hurt you in the beginning. Like, no big deal. Like, I can get away with doing this. Mm -hmm. And then before too long, like, it just... It's like cancer. It just takes over it, your it whole is. body. It, it just took over. It, I, and you we, we don't even know how to explain it. But yeah, it no, happened. And you can't I understand. It. My past. mom's an alcoholic. I get it, yeah. dude. Dude, what's crazy is my 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 mom's dad was an alcoholic, right? Wow. And and yeah. I mean, my mom's dad, and she hated him for being an alcoholic, um, and he always drank. And you know, then she became one. Yeah. Like. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't understand. Like, that'd be like my dad beating me, mm -hmm. you know, not spanking me when I was a kid, but like he beating me, being violence. Yeah. And then I would hate my dad. And then I end up beating my kids. Like, what in the hell is going on here? Like, it's, it's this sickness that doesn't have to exist, but people lean into it and they just can't make good decisions. Yeah. So anyway, so, that, so your dad tears his life down. Your mom's on... On obviously, like she's trying to make it. So you guys are uh, poverty, yeah, food we're, stamps, we're, we're, trying to figure out how to make it. We're literally government cheese, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Food stamps. She's trying to raise five kids. Mm -hmm. um, she's working, you know, 14, 16 hours a day at, at Bell South. I don't even know if you remember that or not, but mm -hmm. Bell South was an uh, old uh, 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 telecommunications company. I was about to say it's a phone company. Yeah, right? it was, man, back in the day. And yeah. uh, they're no longer in existence. Yeah. But, yeah, working 14, 16 hours a day and just trying to raise us. And then she, she finally met my stepfather, which uh, who I consider my dad, yeah, to be honest. That's awesome. Yeah. He's a good uh, man, stepdad. Oh, up. excellent man. Took five kids in, mm -hmm. right? My two brothers stayed back. My two brothers stayed back uh, in Chicago. Uh, my two sisters at that point were already uh, in their 20s. Mm -hmm. So they you know they met their husbands and so forth. And uh, we moved to Miami. That's awesome. And then moving to Miami, you know, things changed for us, right? My dad uh, was in construction. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was just uh, a phenomenal father figure to me. And again, I consider him my dad. Yeah, that's because, awesome. Because um, my, my, my birth father, uh, you know, he was around there for me, but not as much. And every time I saw him, to be honest with you, because I would have to go, you know, see him on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And it was it was just uh, it was just him and his friends and drinking and so forth. And as a kid, you want to look up to your dad as a hero. And I, I know you've mentioned that in your mm -hmm. podcast before. And you want to be the best dad you can be for your kid. And at that age, I didn't I didn't know that. You know, I didn't realize that, mm -hmm. right? So it's like one of those things where now I do know it. And so crazy. Yeah, and unfortunately, I have, I, we, Heather and I were not blessed to, to have kids. We, mm -hmm. we tried, but we weren't blessed. But uh, we have a bunch of nieces and nephews. That you guys have we, dogs. We do. We have fur babies. Absolutely. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say you guys have like yeah, real. We got three. We got three dogs. We got two miniature schnauzers and a, and a toy poodle, and uh, they've been around with us for for a long time. And yeah, we treat them right. So. Yeah, and you guys love each other, and you guys got absolutely. Yeah, like we have a guys... dynamic relationship. Mm -hmm. dynamic. Yeah, and she's freaking awesome. Next time she's gonna be with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Yeah. So so tell me what's going on. So so you're so we growing up. You got in the military when you're how old? I went into the military because my brother, uh, who is my idol. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, I grew up uh, just just following his lead. Never drank, never smoked, never did drugs, never did anything. He's straight shooter, right? Mm -hmm. Straight shooter. Went into the military, got his money for school, uh, came out, paid for you know paid for school with his money. Never asked my mom for a dime. After he uh, got out of the military, joined the FBI, did a 20 year career in the FBI. That's he just awesome. retired. He just retired last year, so which is which is phenomenal. That's cool. Uh, but I'm yeah, proud of him, man. He he like he my nieces at my both of my nephews, he just just treats them just phenomenal. I got one nephew that's just like a Roberts. model human being. Absolutely, he's he yeah. is like a model human being. One nephew is in Or Roberts University, wants to be a preacher. Yeah, right. So I mean, just just has done everything right. So I really look up to him, and uh, that's that's truly who I look up to. And then I have another brother that's not on the right path. 
You know, mm-hmm. he's 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 sort of taken my my birth father's uh, uh, path. Yeah, so hopefully he'll wake up somewhere. Yeah. Uh, we're we're trying to. Yeah, we're yeah. trying to get him to wake up. Okay. Yeah. So how old were you when you got in the military? Military, seventeen years old, man. Seventeen years old. So you got in right out of high school. I right out of high school. Mm-hmm. I moved from Miami. Went moved to Chicago. I drove my Mustang to Chicago, mm-hmm. right? And uh, my mom was like, "Hey." you're going to drive your Mustang to Chicago by yourself? I said, yeah, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. We're going to do it. So my brother at the time that was in the military, he had residence in Chicago. And back in those days, if you were a resident of the state of Illinois, you were able to go to school for free mm. if you do a three-year term in the military. So you did a three-year? I did eight years. Oh, right? wow. So I did five years active, and then I did three years uh, reserve. Mm. So I, uh, I initially joined up for three. I re-upped for two more, and then I re-upped for the reserves for, for three years. What year did you go in? 1993. 1993. Was that Desert Storm? Right on the right on the heels of Desert Storm. So I had two options, and the options weren't mine, obviously. Mm-hmm. They either sent me to Desert Storm to finish out the war, mm-hmm. or sent me to Korea where things were escalating at that time mm-hmm. with the the father of, of Kim Jong-un, right? Uh-huh. So uh, things, you know, things were escalating. So they said, okay, we're, you know, we're going to send you over there to Korea. So my first duty station was Korea. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, so but I was going to say that time, that was right around Desert Storm. It was, it uh-huh. was. It was it was right on the tail end of it, man. Yeah, I remember yeah. every day, like, watching. You remember on TV? Oh, I remember it vividly. Like, yes, you would see the tanks going across the desert yes sir just blowing everything down yeah and can i tell you something yeah my mos which is my job in the military were they were primarily responsible for winning that war Mm. right it was called mlrs multiple launch rocket systems wow and those are the ones that you saw in the desert stop in the middle of the desert launch up shoot rockets out of there yeah it was crazy so it was just phenomenal so i think we only had 44 casualties in that war that's yeah, so crazy. So it's a, that's that was, um, you know, you never want war, right? No, no. Well, but I remember that that yeah, was the was, time, yeah, like almost was. like two years straight, right? It, it seemed was, like every day. It was nuts. It was nuts. You see that on TV, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, my mom was worried about me going to the military and going to war. But mm-hmm. it, it, we've always done this in the family. My great grand, uh, my great grandfather was a uh, a battalion sergeant major. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then uh, obviously my brother, then myself, and now we got my niece and my nephew. They're major, so it's it's, it's been in the family. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's been great. What was some of the greatest things that the military taught you? Oh, Andy, I can. I mean, do we have an hour? Like was it like <laughs> like like heavy discipline? It like, was discipline. It was uh, you know if you're not, it, it, and it's sort structure. of like the motto that you run here. It's very structured. It's very disciplined. Mm-hmm. It's it's like look. It's one strike, you're out. There's no three strikes there, right? Mm -hmm. So very disciplined, very structured, Mm -hmm. very uh, in your face, right? But that's all just to build your character. Yeah. Build you into a man. It's just directness, right? right? It's directness, right? And I I talked to a lot of my friends when I went in. Well, why'd you you go in there? You got people spinning in your face, and you got drill sergeants just screaming at you. And I said, you you guys don't understand, man. They want you to be great. They want you to be excellent. They want yeah, like pe- you like people to say, hate hearing human that. Excellence. Yeah, people hate hearing that, man, mm-hmm. and and that's why almost we run pretty militant, yeah. is uh, and people either listen if it bothers you to get corrected, yeah. you'll hate us. Mm-hmm. If it mm-hmm. bothers you to have criticism, well, only losers hate criticism. Winners love it. Yeah. Hey guys, Andy Elliott. Sorry to interrupt the video. I know you guys are hearing me talking to my man Mike. Listen, Mike has a great roofing company. Literally right now. Uh, He's looking for great leaders and great sales reps to join his company in beautiful, sunny Florida, okay? So if you're looking to go to one of the best states in the country where it's always warm, it's always beautiful, close to the ocean, kick some butt, and you want to make some money and become a good leader and help Mike grow his roofing company, residential and commercial, you guys can go ahead and click the link below right now. You can fill out your information, send a 60-second video. Mike personally will contact you in the next 24 hours. If you want to change your life, Here's your chance. Click the link below. Let's get back to the video. Winners take every opportunity to get better they can, yeah. and they're just grateful for anybody that will tell them the truth and point out a yeah. hole they have. Yeah. Losers hate it. Yeah, you know I what agree. I'm saying. And, and so, I like agree. the military, like all they're trying to do is just build you to be a winner. You know, and yeah. to get you to own your own your shit. That's it. That's all. Accountability. That's exactly mm-hmm. it. What do you think drew me to you? Yeah. 
That's cool. When I saw you on that stage, yeah, this is my man right here. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and they that's don't it. let you slide. They don't let you shortcut. No. They don't let you cut corners. They make you no. keep your word. No. Right? Yes, absolutely. Like if you say you're going to get up. Absolutely. A, a, yeah. You know what I love most about the military? The teamwork. If mm. one fails, everybody fails. Everybody yeah. fails. That's huge. If, if, if one screws up, everybody's dropping and giving 20, everybody's 30, punished. 40. Right? If one screws up, everybody's doing fireman lifts. Everybody. And that's what I love. So about it, the it, it makes you almost, instead of like, because, you know, a lot of people will let themselves down. Yeah. But they won't let someone else down. Exactly. Um, I'm going to give you an example, and I'm going to say why, like, once you know everybody has to be punished, then you're on your best because, you know, you don't want your boys to have to pay for something you're not doing. That's right. But if you messed up and they didn't have to do it and you just had to pay, a lot of times you just slouch over because you're like, screw it. You know what I mean? Correct. Um, it, it's kind of like if we were going to go to the gym and I told you that I was going to be there every morning at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. waiting on you to lift. Mm -hmm. Well, you would make sure you're there at 5 a.m. because you don't want to let me down because you know I'm waiting on you. Of course. But if I wasn't waiting on you and you knew it was just your responsibility to go at 5 a.m. and no one was waiting on you. Sure. Well, if you slept in, nobody would really know. Right. And that's why, I like, the military ties in. I like that if somebody messes up, everybody's getting it. Um, yeah. Here in our company, if somebody yawns, everybody has to do push-ups. That's awesome. I, I love yeah. that. So. I love that. Because, you, to be honest with you, they're preparing you for war. Yeah. Bottom line. That's yeah. what the military is doing, right? To prepare for your and, and if you're in a foxhole with somebody, yeah, that's gonna be your battle buddy, right? That's right. So you cannot let that person down. Yeah. So accountability is everything. Man. Yeah, and, and honestly the it creates the brotherhood. Sure. Um, yeah. you know, at the end of the day when you're going to war with somebody, dude, if you've ever, you know, had to gone through any hard times with them, mm -hmm. like how do you know how to protect each other? How do you know how to yeah. have feeling toward each other? How do you have emotions toward each other? You know, why would you want to fight harder for that person? You know, like they do yeah. a good job of like, you know, we always say like, you know, blood, sweat and tears, you know, like you'll have someone's back when it's more than just a position, when it's more than mm -hmm. just that. It, mm -hmm. It's personal. And it, it's it's funny that you touch on that, because truly, like you like to say, when you have a mentor or a leader, you run through a brick wall for them. Yeah, like you'll die for them. In the military, it's the same thing for your battle buddy, for your for your for your brother in arms, your, you know, your fellow brother, you will you will die for. Isn't that Literally. crazy? It, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, you don't want to die, but if, you know, you, how many times have you seen a grenade come in and somebody takes a grenade that's, that's or, or something it's, happens, yeah. you know, and it, it's just like, you know, like you never thought you would do that and you take your life or you, you save someone's life yeah. to, to lose your life just from someone yeah. that's not even your family, but you know that they have a family. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like you just don't want to see them get hurt. Yeah. Just being you know, selfless, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's, it's making massive leaders. And anyways, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just wish we had a little bit more of that. I know a lot of people, they're like, eh, I don't like that. Um, those people live without fulfillment their whole life. True. It, it sucks. I feel bad for them yeah. that they don't feel that kind of love. So, yeah. so the military taught you a lot of that. That's awesome. Um, you served for eight years. Yes, sir. Um, did you get out and go into construction? No, actually, I went into sales. To mm. be honest with you. And what? So, what, what industry? Uh, well, uh, several. Mm -hmm. Right, so I went into uh, the cell phone industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you remember when Sprint PCS was Sprint PCS. Oh yeah. So went in there, did a little B two B with them, uh -huh. and then they bought Nextel out, mm -hmm. as, as you probably I remember, remember that. And then that just became that's what cat catapulted my my sales career because mm -hmm. when that came out, that changed the game. You know, you can go to every warehouse uh, in the whole Florida area, you know, and and sell to these warehouses because it's direct connect. So. That really catapulted. Everybody that. had a Nextel, bro. Everybody, everybody. I remember, bro, 1999, <laughs> yeah. right? I had a flip phone, yeah. and that was like a big deal. Remember, they that were just was, like that, big the hunks in there. Oh, dude, I had a flip phone. You would flip it, and literally, dude, you know, you could dial, you know, it just had the number screen on it. Um, but you could Nextel your buddy. Like, you could go to a phone number and set a call in. Sure. You could just literally ping him yep. on the spot. Remember Crazy, that? Crazy, man, that chirp. Yeah, that, that, that chirp, that, and I would be in the bank, and my buddy would go, and he'd be like, hey, what's up, big dog? And like, if you didn't have that thing turned yeah. down. Yeah, like everybody it, hears it. It was like a walkie-talkie. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, it, it was exactly a walkie-talkie, yeah. but anybody that was in your phone as a contact that had a Nextel Correct. could literally walkie-talkie you yeah. on the spot. And I remember one time I was in a car dealership, and I was shutting down a deal. It was like 2000, and my buddy had a really foul mouth, right? Uh -huh. And I'm sitting there and I'm talking and I'm closing this deal. And buddy's like, 
He's like, hey, you. And it's like, da, 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 da. Oh, and, I, and the customers, I'm like, how do I turn this thing down? And I'm like, dude, it's like this walkie talkie could hit any time during the night. You know what's phenomenal about that? The whole Nextel thing is just, it took, it was like a walkie talkie on steroids. You can have a friend in California and oh. chirp them. Yeah, across the country. Yeah, dude, it was great. It was across the country walkie yeah, talkie. But it, I, I do, it, it's funny. It blew because, up, dude. Yeah, it blew up. And not only that, when you chirp, and you start speaking, everybody hears it. That's everybody. happened to me a thousand times. Yeah, thousand uh, times. yeah. So like, because yeah. you know, you don't know if I hit you up, I don't know where you're at. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I said. Like, you could be in the bank, you could be on a date, you could be closing a deal, you could be making a sale. Sure. And that person could say anything they wanted. Yeah. And it would just come through on your phone right out through. loud for everybody to hear. They didn't have like a silence or anything like that. I don't. At least I don't remember that. No, right? I, I know because I was always getting busted up. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, I was a kid, you know, I was yeah. 20 years old. So yeah. I was just like, you know, I don't care. Yeah. You know, I thought it was just so cool to have a piece of technology, mm -hmm. you know, because I was poor when I was young. So even having a pager was something that we couldn't afford. So like, I just, you know, like rich I kids had those. pagers, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. and then it went from pager to the handbag carry cell phone. Remember that? You know, like you had to, you know, like plug it in. Yeah, yeah, you know? plug it in. And, and then you in the car. hold it like mm -hmm. this, plug it into the car, pull the, the antenna brick. out the window, the brick. <laughs> yeah. And then and then they had that Nextel flip phone. I was like, dude, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And it was just awesome, man. So it's crazy that you worked for Nextel. Worked for Nextel Sprint. Then I went on to, uh, to waste management, mm, right? Okay. Worked for waste management mm -hmm. for 13 years. 13 years, right? And I was the number one sales rep uh, in state of florida for five six six out of those 13 years that's kick butt right? dude. and uh, it was just phenomenal so that taught me a lot a lot about sales i mean a lot mm -hmm. because if you could sell trash man you you, you can sell anything mm -hmm. to be honest with yeah, you yeah no seriously yeah, yeah. yeah. you, you can sell trash if you can sell trash to a customer man you could sell anything yeah it's crazy but we did a good job and, and, there. It was and you've fun. always been in so, so you've always been in sales you were in the military yep um you obviously are an overcomer mm -hmm. Um, and now you have your company, um, and you're, you're looking to build leaders. Is that right? I mean, I and you're am. looking for a sales team. Tell me, yes. tell me what are your core values? If I was, if I was 25 years old and I'm like, dude, sure. okay, I'm looking for a great earning opportunity. Sure. I want to go work hard. I'm looking for a good organization. I'm looking for a good leader. What, what are some of the core value, core values in the way that you lead in your company and the kind of people you're looking for? Yeah. Well, we're definitely looking for dynamic people because we're, we're building a dynamic culture within the company. Mm -hmm. And what that entails is we, first off, we're, we're a faith-based company, right? Love that. So, so we have a saying in our company mm -hmm. that God is our senior partner. I love that. Okay, God is our source. That's super important. Okay, that is super important for us, right? Mm -hmm. And with that said, we want to build a, a, a team that, you know, I don't want them to look at me like I'm their boss. I may be their boss on paper, but I want them to look at me as their mentor, their leader, mm -hmm. right? Because if, if I accomplish me, you know, helping them out mm -hmm. and becoming leaders, then you, I've done my you, job so they you, can So you so basically want to build a company that helps develop people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Help develop people. Our culture is is based off of, of, of principles, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's dedication. Like standards. It's standards, right? It's basically it's it's uh, like human excellence. Human excellence. Yeah, That's it. like just being good yeah. people. At yeah. the end of the day, you'd rather hire some guy that doesn't know how to sell, that doesn't mind speaking to people, helping people, yeah. you know, helping customers, you know, with their roof needs or construction. Mm -hmm. And obviously, at the end of the day, it sells. So there's a great earning opportunity. Sure. I know that a lot of your guys that are in sales actually have a great opportunity to move up into leadership in your company and Absolutely. actually and actually uh, run run departments of it. Is that right? Absolutely. We believe in promoting mm -hmm. from within, mm -hmm. okay, and giving those opportunities to people that work with us already. Uh, you know, That's super it, cool. It, it is super cool because they already know the system. Mm -hmm. They know your culture. They know who you. They know what you stand for. Yeah, right. I love that. So, so by promoting from within, not only is it a shot in the arm for them. But it just shows everybody else that's behind them mm -hmm. that they can also do it. Yeah, right? I love that. So it's, it's awesome. Yeah, th this is important, guys. If anybody's watching this right now, like super important. A lot, I like to introduce a lot of my friends uh, to a lot of you guys. Um, people that have overcome things, who have been through hard stuff, that have faced adversity. Um, I, like, I, like, I like introducing a lot of my successful friends that never thought they could be successful or no one else ever thought they would be successful. And they've overcome that and they've changed their life and they've, 
you know, proven to people who didn't believe in him. They proved, they proved their haters wrong. Um, he's got an awesome wife. Y'all guys have been married for 16 years. 16 years. Um, 16 years. And um, how old are you? Are you 40? I am 48. Are you really? You look young, dude. Well, thank you. You look like you get like like thank he's you. got like he's got like skin of like a 25 year old like his face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's got like a baby face. Kind of hard to do in Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, you, hey, beautiful Florida. Um, they live in Orlando. Um, he's building out his roofing company, uh, commercial, obviously uh, residential, um, looking for salespeople. Okay, super important. What is that? That's somebody that wants to help somebody help themselves. People need a roof. It's very simple. They got a great reputable company. It's faith based. Um, they're super awesome. Um, his wife's a big part of the organization with him. She's amazing, and uh, it, it's a family business too. You know, it it's is. a family. It's been in business for how long? Forty years. Thirty-two years. Thirty-two. Thirty-two years, years mm-hmm. and we're veteran owned. That's awesome. We give back to the community. I'm in. I'm in the process right now of doing something really cool, Andy. I love and it. Has, and it has to do with the military. That's so cool. I'm in the process right now. We got some uh, some military liaisons that are helping me out right now. Mm-hmm. That we are going to give back roofs to veterans. That's so okay, cool. That are in need. That's awesome. Right? And uh, we're, we're we're in the process of, of building that right now. So that's cool. Uh, every year we're going to give back a certain amount of roofs. Yeah. And it's going to help out a veteran in need that truly needs it. That's and, so cool. Uh, and you know your roofing structure, man. That, that's what protects your home. Oh yeah, right? no, no, it's super so, important. So you yeah. know, if, if they're, you know, we, we definitely need to give back to our vets. Yeah, giving yeah. back, dude, giving Absolutely. back is, is probably one of the most important things in the world. And uh, you know, unfortunately, because there's not a gr- lot of great leaders. No disrespect to anybody, uh, but there's just not a lot of great leaders that people don't really start teaching that until they get older. That's um, true. You know, so you usually find it with people when they get older that they've made a lot of money, they do things, they work hard, and then they realize that, dude, this hole in my heart, the only time I feel it, you know, heal is when I give back, sure. when I help. Um, so now that's what you want to do, and you always want to make sure that's a part of your mission. Absolutely. Um, guys, you've met my buddy, Mike Martinez. He is awesome. Super cool. Amazing. Speak Spanish or English, especially in Orlando. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Big, big Spanish clientele. Um, but anybody and any, and everybody right now, you guys can make sure there's a link below that you guys can click on. You guys can reach out to Mike, which I love. And you guys can literally very simply answer a couple questions. You know, like what are some things that are important to you? You can send over a 60 second video. Mike will reach out to himself personally in the next 24 hours. Um, if you guys are looking to just crush it and kill it, you're ready to change your life. Uh, you're ready to build a new life. You're ready to start a new life in sales. What better place to start it than beautiful Orlando, Florida? Yes. Especially when there's an opportunity where you, when you start day one, know that you're going into sales where you can have a great earning opportunity, but also work your way up into a leadership position, which is Mike's ultimate goal with you. Okay. So I love you guys, Mike. I know next time you guys are here, right? You're going to have your wife with you. Absolutely. We're going to do another one because she's a She's badass. She's a beast. Yeah, she's a beast. And so we're going to have her next time. Um, but super important, are you on Are you on Instagram? I am, and I'm trying to build that, that yeah, social Yeah, it's media. okay. But if somebody yeah. wants to, to DM you on social media, on Instagram, how do they find you? Z's Roofing and Construction. So Z's, Z-E-E-S, Z-E-E-S Roofing and Construction. Roofing and Construction. On Instagram. On Instagram, yes, Good, sir. Guys, if you want to DM, you guys can reach them out or reach out to them there. It's a way to get a hold of them. If you want to ask sure. them any questions. Or you guys can just click that link below in the description box. You guys can reach out to them. But, guys, you met my man Mike today. Mike, I always say dreams come with the price. If you don't pay the price, you don't get the dream. Mike has worked his whole life to build something special, and I love that he's wanting to share it with people that want to change their life. Absolutely. So um, anybody that reaches out, he's a faith-based man and has a faith-based company. I love that. Um, God is everything, and it's just super cool when you see that, when people tell you up front, like, hey, man, we believe in God, and uh, we just want to, you know, we have a big God. We have a short amount of time uh, to do stuff, and we got a lot to do. Um, we got a big God, so let's go build a big life. Let's go help a lot of people, and yes, you know, let's let's raise our standards and become you know awesome people. And that's what that's what he stands for. That's why he's with me today, because anybody that I meet that makes a big impact on me, that I'm just like, dude, this guy's super cool. I'm always like, dude, I got to share him with you guys. I got to share him with the world. Should inspire you to be greater, but also gives you an opportunity to partner with somebody great like him. So love you guys. Have a blessed day. We'll see you guys in the next video. Let's kill it.
Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.